Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today I wanna talk about some stuff that I was reading uh, and touch on a couple of, of topics. It's really energy return on energy invested. Um, I was going through Twitter, there's a couple of people making some comments on energy return on investment. And I, I wanted to touch on a couple of things with mining, just mining in general and energy usage. So we'll, we'll look at a couple of quotes here. One of the quotes is, there seems to be a consensus overestimation of what technology has enabled society to achieve and an underestimation of what cheap energy has enabled. Reality is about to correct this misunderstanding. What this means is that technology isn't as great as what most people think. We have not progressed as far as what a lot of people think and they're putting too much, too much, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a good word. Too much credit and and too much, we'll call it. They're relying too much on technology versus what cheap energy has enabled us to do in society. Cheap energy has been the driver, not technology, in my opinion. Technology is not going to to completely solve our problems with declining ore grades and increasing energy consumption uh, and and a whole bunch of different things that are that are rooted in the physical world and in physics. Not necessarily, um, I mean, technology's great. We've made some progress over the years, but it's not as large as what you think. Uh, I'm not flying around. I'm not being beamed up by Scotty. Uh, we're not creating homes uh, at cheaper prices. We haven't had a massive uh, decline in home prices, which I don't know how our currency system would work. Uh, we haven't had a technological breakthrough on our, you know, on a free market currency. We haven't had a lot of stuff that I would like to see that would absolutely, completely change the world that we live in. If we had a free market currency that was free to use, had no fees, was completely private, I mean that that's going to be the one that I jump on. You could say that gold and silver is that. It's just not as. Um, it, it, it's provided by the earth. It is a natural element to earth. And th those things are the, those things and commodities will be what are valuable to humans, not man-made things. But we have to figure out a way to transact value across countries and people without government inter intervention uh, or taxes and privacy. That, that's kind of my take on it. Now, I put on here on the right-hand side, it says, uh, this is your energy output versus your energy input. This is your energy return on investment. You invest a barrel or two and you get 99 back. That's what this green line is. We are declining rapidly uh, where we put in a barrel and we get only 20 back. A lot of the renewables, a lot of the renewables are lower than what you think, but they're definitely coming off this cliff. Oil shale, tar sands, solar, nuclear, coal. They have wind up here. I don't believe that. New oil and gas discoveries, historic oil and gas discoveries. And we're continuing to move down this uh, and go after lower returns and lower returns, which means that we expend energy and we get less back to use in society. We are going to strangle ourselves of energy use at some point. And it's going to be harder and harder uh, to, to have more and more energy for society. So what we're going to have to do is get a lot more efficient with energy use because we're gonna have less energy to use in society uh, as time progresses on. Producer price index, one thing I wanted to touch on. Uh, worldwide, Spain, 32%, Germany, 18%, Sweden, 17, Canada, 7, uh, 16, China, 13, all of them are over 8%. What does this mean? It means that the producers, their prices are going up, their input costs are going up, and this is going to translate into consumer prices going up. We, in the United States, our dollar index is lower because we have lower inflation than the rest of the world. These all have higher inflation. So when we look at the index, yes, the index is going up for the dollar, but the dollar is still going down because of inflation. We are all plummeting towards zero value in paper currencies. This is your producer price index showing that. Now, another thing I want to talk on, talk on ore grades this is your ore grade and we're going from right to left this is your energy intensity as it hockey sticks higher it's a reverse hockey stick you've got your hockey stick laying on on the on its on its back with the blade coming up 
what this is telling us is I'm combining these two charts. We have less energy to do work with, but at the same time, our ore grades are declining. This is for copper and your energy inputs are about to go up vertically. We are at 0.5% copper ore grades and below for a lot of our new uh, copper mines. And the existing copper mines, the ore grades are declining over time. It's getting harder and harder to extract it. And we are using far more energy. What this is telling us is that we're about to hockey stick higher in our energy uses to get copper. A lot of byproducts, silver and a whole bunch of other um, metals are byproducts of copper. And if copper gets way harder to extract, those byproducts are going to start to go down as well. Because those ore grades are also declining. So we have declining ore grades worldwide and our energy consumption in mining is about to go vertical. This is one of the reasons why I like royalty companies and I like the physical precious metals, owning the physical. Because as we decline, our cost curves are going to start moving on up. They say technology is going to help it. Well, we'll see. We'll see about that. According to this, your energy input costs, and I don't know any way around it, you're going to have to just consume a ton more energy. Looking at total energy and tons of copper produced to show you in real life what that looks like. Tons of copper produced has been roughly flat. Our energy continues to increase at a faster pace than our tons produced. That's what this gap, growing gap is. It's just a, a pictorial showing that the total energy per ton not per ton, but this is total tons versus total energy is continuing to go up. We're getting less and less efficient per uh, ton of copper in terms of energy usage. Here is the ore grades. The total ore grades, uh, this is copper, gold, lead, zinc, uranium, nickel, diamonds. They're all going down. They're all approaching, asymptotically approaching very low numbers. The general trend is more energy consumption. We're going to have to move more tons of earth to get less and less back here's the copper demand we've got that so coming back to this we got to use a ton more copper coming in terms of energy usage our copper demand from 2020 is right here 2021 it's just rocketing higher to the uh, from a left to right perspective this is going to drive an exponential use of energy and i don't think we have the copper in the ground to, to provide the copper demand that this has. We'll get to maybe out to a couple years and then we're gonna have some problems. 2023, 2024, 2025, somewhere in that range. And we're, we're, we're hitting problems. Another thing I saw, this is off a newspaper. It says rent surges 40% or more in these smaller US cities. Rent is surging. We have a shortage in real estate. Rent is gonna continue to surge because we don't have buyers. We have to turn buyers into renters because they can't buy homes. There's not enough homes and there's not enough homes for rent. When you have a shortage in homes, your rent prices and your house prices go up massively. That's exactly what we're seeing and our inventory levels are at record lows. Patrick Karam, I was reading something on him. He said, we are currently transitioning from a 40 year secular disinflation cycle from 81 to 2021 to a secular inflation cycle. And we, our last one went from 1940 to 1980. That's what we're transitioning into. I 100% agree with him. Expect, I think he meant turbulence. When most money managers thought that worked during their entire 30-year careers stop working for them, they'll find it difficult because what they know today is not going to work in the last 40 years it worked. So it worked in the last 40 years, but now it's going to stop working. And it, it's going to be a slap in the face to these people. And I totally agree. Now they're breaking news. It says stocks, uh, silver, registered silver stocks decreased by 6 million ounces in a single day on Friday. Down 93 million ounces is what the silver inventories have dropped. Huge, huge drop in inventories. Uh, so those are some things I wanted to talk about in um, just, just to kind of re refresh you guys' memories here. Uh, we're going to run into shortages of a whole bunch of different things. It's out there. We're going to see much higher prices. We are transitioning from a environment that people are used to to something that's new that they've never seen before, which is going to be an inflationary environment. It's going to put pressure on interest rates to go up. Will interest rates go up? I don't know. I don't know what they can do. Everyone tells me that interest rates can't go up because it's going to bankrupt the United States. Well, you know what? The pressure is there. I can tell you that. The pressure to raise interest rates is going to be massive going forward. They're going to try to hold them down. 
I understand that. Uh, and I don't know if they're going to be successful or not. It's going to be a lot of pressure. We are going to hit shortages of copper, nickel, nickel, cobalt. We're, 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 they're going to be trying to design this stuff out. The PGM metals are going to get hit really hard from stricter emission standards. Gold's going to get run at. Silver's going to run at from the monetary aspect and from inflation. Home prices are short. I should say home inventories are short. Home prices are going to rocket higher. Rent prices are rocketing higher. Uh, we have a larger demographic coming in here buying homes. We don't have the homes. And we're going to have a shortage in energy. We're going to have an energy crisis on our hands. This crisis is going to manifest itself with far higher prices in metals, in my opinion. Now, buying physical metals is a play on energy crisis because you own the medical or you own the physical metal. You have it in your hands and that took energy to extract out of the earth. And if energy prices go rocketing higher, if, if, if they continue to move on up uh, at, at dramatic speeds because of inflation, because of shortages, supply demand imbalance, we'll see that uh, gold to oil ratio contract. Then uh, you're playing an energy crisis move with physical metals because they've already taken the energy to get it out of the ground. You bought it when it was cheap energy. If the energy prices rocket higher, their cost curves are going to rocket higher and the bottom end of everything's going to start to move up. You're going to get inflation. People are going to notice it. And then all of a sudden, you're going to get a huge demand wave coming to it as people run away from currencies and inflation in their currencies. I see it as a huge, huge bull market coming in front of us. You just have to be patient. It's going to take some time. Accumulate when no one's looking. You build positions when no one's looking and when no one's buying, and then you wait. That's how you make lots and lots of money. You don't buy it when everyone else is buying it. You buy it before everyone else. You're going to be at the party all by yourself. That's the way it works. That's how you make money. You buy it when no one else is buying it. So uh, platinum looked like it was really starting to take off. I think it was up $23. Um, I think we're breaking out of this descending wedge pattern. It's ready to go. So that's that's my opinion. Give me a thumb up. If you guys like this content, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.